the, the first truly interactive real-time strategy games. I think we're probably one of the first companies that has something like 1.6 terabytes of data storage on our network so that we can create these elaborate 3D sets and, and graphics and, and technology. We're doing things that nobody else has done before. In fact, we've got people that were going, well, I still don't understand how you're going to do it, but it's cool that you're going to do it. If I know exactly what I'm going for, I don't really have a problem building anything or texture mapping it or get making the lighting so that it looks real or any of that. The biggest challenge that I face is what will be cool. Game fans have become very sophisticated. That's why a lot of products are being forced to go high res. One product comes out in high res, now they want all products to be in high res and this and that. And what that entails is, is a great, like I said, a great deal more detail as well as an incredible amount of coding. Uh, programmers have got to write stuff that's been like going, wow, how are we going to do this? It's physically impossible to do that, but we've, we've got to figure out a way to do it anyway. Shipping on time would be very, very nice, but you have to be strong enough sometimes to take your lumps in the marketplace and with the journalistic community to say, it, it's not ready yet. This is an art form, it's a creative process, and you cannot relegate it to a linear schedule. I'll do these drawings, and they're, they're in 2D form. And then, uh, if they get approved, I will draw them straightforward, almost like a schematic type drafted drawing, directly from the front, one, and another drawing direct, directly from the side. And those drawings will then go to our, our 3D artists, and they can build a model of these heads and these bodies. We just finished this guy here, Runciter. He looks fantastic. He looks like a real person. I mean, they. I saw him today on, on the uh, monitors and they had him revolving in space. You can see the back of his pants, the back of his head. The 3D has really taken off in the last couple of years. And it is very exciting to, to see a flat drawing come right off that paper and become a three-dimensional object in space. What you see here is the real power of our rendering farm. Here we've got one of the largest rendering farms probably in the country. Um, we've got 50 Pentium 90s, 128 megs of RAM, pumping away frames of animation 24 hours a day. Thanks to these, we're able to render out sometimes three, 4,000 frames of video resolution stuff a night. When I first got into it, everything I looked at, I saw in wireframe. Uh, you know, look at my wife's leg and it's like, I know I can make that. Your entire Hollywood crew wrapped up in one with these powerful packages. You know, I've created a guy, you have him run through a scene, and then you light it, and then you set up the dr dramatic camera angles, all of it. it it's just so exciting to do. In this case, we actually have a video of a girl that we photographed uh, and animated, and I, mean, I told her, actually, basically, we would to this girl and we put her in front of the camera and say, okay, you act like you're doing this with your hands and, and whatever, and you're gonna be into this scene. And now in this case, this guy is actually a 3D object. Basically, playability is the most important thing. I mean, if you create good art, that really doesn't hold a candle to it. The person can take this game and they can immerse themselves in the world or they can do things with it and they just and it's it's fun for them that's it's always what we're shooting for is basically how to how to create fun for people
and that's an elusive target, <laughs> but it's something that we're always, you know, trying to do. In 1996 and 1997, you'll see us creating whole new experiences, whole new internet-only, online-only products that people have never seen before. I think it's, it represents the epitome of, of interactive entertainment.